Our precious Father, we come before your presence with grateful hearts as we understand, dear Lord, that though we are nothing, yet in Jesus we are accounted as your children and treated as such. So, dear Lord, we can come with confidence into your throne and request that you will pour your Spirit among us. As, dear Lord, we, we need him so much to be our teacher, our guide, the one who will open the Scriptures for our understanding. I myself, Lord, stand before you, Lord, unworthy and unable to speak anything of my own. I am worse than a, than a donkey, Lord. I pray that you will open my, my mouth and glorify yourself, Lord, through me, and that no eyes may be fixed on me, but, but all eyes may turn to Jesus. I pray, dear Lord, that the message this morning will be clear. But it will, be, it will come, Lord, with the power of the Holy Spirit and not, Lord, with the power of argumentative words. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. This morning I'd like to begin the message looking at a number of texts that we have already considered, but I'd like us I like this text to introduce the message for us this morning. This is our fourth message on our series entitled Walking with God, in which I'm endeavoring to just, in simple steps, introduce to you and to all of us what it means to be a Christian and how we are to live the Christian life. If there is one subject that there is a lot of confusion is how do we live the Christian life? How do I enter into this experience with the Lord and then maintain it so I don't lose it? Come to Luke chapter 14 and we'll read verse, not Luke 14, Luke 9, sorry, Luke chapter 9. And we'll, and we'll read verses 23 to 27. Luke chapter 9, verses 23 to 27. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. So here we have an invitation of Jesus Christ and following the invitation, Jesus explains to us in three examples the consequences of us rejecting or accepting that invitation. The invitation has three parts. Jesus says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him, what is the first step? Take up his cross, denying himself daily, and then follow me. So dear friends, the beginning of the Christian life, as, as we spoke of last week, is found in us entering into a contract with the Lord in which we will be willing to take up the cross, deny self, and then we will follow Him. I want you to picture in your minds the sanctuary. If you realize that the Hebrew sanctuary had a, a courtyard, and then in the midst of the courtyard there was the temple or the tent. In the courtyard there were two pieces of furniture. There was an altar of sacrifice and there was a laver. And then came the holy place and inside the holy place there was three pieces of furniture, a table of showbread, a, an altar of incense and a candlestick. When Jesus came out of heaven... 
The first thing he did in order to begin his ministry, he was baptized. He went into the lava. He was buried because he had already died to himself. The cross for Jesus was not where he died because Christ, when he became a human and he emptied himself in heaven and became a servant, meant death to who he was. So he entered into a contract with his father where he will no longer live as God, but he would become a servant, take the form of a human being, and then he would be crucified. So when he was baptized, Jesus actually was buried. And he was buried because he had already died to himself. The cross was simply a result of that experience. But when you and I enter into the temple, into into the courtyard, the first thing that awaits to us is an altar of sacrifice. And in order for us, if we want to enter the holy place, which is the place where all priests enter, and you and I are priests of the Lord if we accept Jesus, the first thing that you and I must do, we must meet Christ where? At the altar of sacrifice. Where He was crucified, you and I must also be crucified, and we must die to self. That is the meaning of taking up the cross and denying self. Then once you have entered into this agreement with the Lord, then comes the burial service. And what is the burial service? It's baptism. Once you have been buried, now the doors are open for you to enter into the holy place and follow Jesus into the holy place. And the holy place is the place of communion with Christ. Have you ever wondered that? The holy place has a table with bread on top. The holy place has a candlestick with, with candles burning. Lady, imagine the, the, the scene. And there is a it's sweet aroma of the burning incense. What does this sound like, uh, ladies? Gentlemen, you, you, you will not think of this until the women say. What is it? It's a candlelight what? It's a candlelight dinner. You're sitting with Jesus in the most beautiful context. Why are you sitting with him? You are eating with him. And you are talking with him. Pray. And that will turn you to become a light, a tree that is full of fruit. One of the things I've been studying this week is the, is the subject of the sanctuary in the Old Testament. And did you know that the candlestick is formed in the, in, the, in, the, in the likeness of an almond tree. Did you ever realize that? It has, it has a trunk and it has six branches and all the branches have almond flowers and almond fruit on it. And what is the tree? The tree is a symbol of a human being. First and foremost, it's a symbol of Jesus Christ. The tree. But also it says the Bible that a just man, a righteous man, is a tree planted by the rivers of water that gives its fruit in its season. Amen. And so when you and I commune with the Lord, when we follow Him because we've taken the cross, we've denied self, we've buried self on the waters of baptism, self has been buried, now we enter into the holy place, and then, now friends, that there is no self, that self has been given to the Lord, now communion with the Lord has no bounds, no limits. It becomes the most exciting, most beautiful, wonderful experience that a human being can ever have the experience of actually communing with God. What an invitation, isn't it? If we had the time, we could say more. But then Jesus says this, verse 24, For whoever desires to save his life, so if you look, if you listen to this, to the truth that the Lord is bringing to us this morning and last week and the previous week, and you say, no, I want to have my life. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to surrender it. I don't want to, be, I don't want to die. Jesus says, if you want to save your life, you will lose it. And then he says, but if you want to lose your life for my sake, then you will gain it. What is the secret for eternal life? The secret for eternal life is a complete surrender of your life, a death to self. And then Jesus gives us another example. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole?